Here's just a few of my favorite things about this tool evolution. The first thing I really love is how we've refocused our tools for model execution. I love how we've removed a lot of the jargon and language that wasn't really about completing the tool. Our tools have become much more streamlined frameworks that are focused on unleashing your strategic thinking. All of the steps in the tools are focusing relentlessly on the instructions you need to execute and accomplish the goal, get the deliverable for each action. They're really tools now. There's a lot less tangents that distract users from the deep thinking tasks at hand. Along with that, what I really love about these new tools is the powerful practice-based questions we have for you to answer. And it's all in these fillable boxes in our nice new PDFs. Along with streamlining those instructions, the content of the instructions has been elevated significantly. I really have always believed strongly in the power of questions. I spend so much of my time thinking about and designing questions because I know that the way that questions are worded help the listener answer in a different way. So the questions in the new tools are based on the practice of the model and what's worked and what questions have helped the most in completing the intent of the action and really getting and driving at the deliverable, the goal of the action while following those LCD principles. These questions are now attached to clearly fillable spaces in the tools. Again, we're really trying to help you focus on the deep thinking tasks relentlessly with this evolution, with these LCD tools version 2.0. Another thing I really like about our evolution is that we're more supportive of modern learning and modern learners. When evolving these tools, I was thinking of this as our own journey to upgrade an existing asset. I love how in this evolution, we're walking the talk of our own nine elements of modern learning. We're thinking a lot more about how we made the make this for me. Um, we thought a lot about inclusivity of learner differences and our learner personas. We thought about things like the color choices we're using to ensure that the tools are readable. We thought a lot about visual learners. We thought a lot about text and how to make that more concise. We thought about adding video, and um, through our video walkthrough courses for each tool, you can now hear from an expert, for me, how to use the tools and the different steps and examples for each tool. So I love how we're also introducing a MVAC component to our tools. We're also thinking about hyperlinking. And as a part of this, we thought more about the moments of learning need and how a tool user might need to learn some things for the first time, but not need to learn that in the content of the actual tool. Other users might wanna learn more and dive deeper. And so we actually have a section of further learning assets that can help support the information you find in the tool. Finally, the last thing I really love about our evolution with these tools is the names we use. You're going to hear Lisa talk about this as well. Names are so important to me because words really hold meaning. Through our new names, we have deepened the meaning behind our original ideas, and we further developed our concepts. We've learned a lot through practice of the power of our work and the impact we're having. The new names convey that impact more accurately. Our language has continued also to become more powerful and easy to use with stakeholders outside of learning. Some of my favorite changes are from strategic performance objective, SPO, to on-the-job change objective, or OCO. After a lot of discussion and voting from users, we are now able to connect the work of learning 
directly to driving on the job change, which is a huge LCD principle. It's the name of one of our actions. And finally, it's the name of our objective, our anchor for our learning cluster work on the job change objective. Definitely one of my favorite name changes we've done. Another favorite change for me is the introduction of the learner differences wheel and the LCD levels of evaluation. The learner differences wheel, it finally makes all of those categories we talked about with learner personas more clear and memorable. And I think that's going to be awesome because it's going to really make an impact on the learning assets we're choosing for different personas. The LCD levels of evaluation, it gets us a method for measuring collective impact. Again, it's, it's a name, but it's the concept behind that name that's going to make all the difference. So these are just a couple of my favorite things with our version 2.0 of the LCD tools. I really can't wait to hear your favorites with these tools and how you are planning on using the LCD model in your journey to modernize learning wherever you are.